Hey Tubers, Jason here from the Dead Card Gamer, and today we're going to be learning how to play Hecatomb from Wizards of the Coast. First, a quick overview of the game. In this game you play an Inbringer, or Dark Wizard, who is trying to end life on Earth, bring it into the world, and glory to whatever higher power it is that you worship. Uh, you do this by collecting or reaping souls from your opponents and uh, therefore pulling power away from their dark god and giving it to yours. You win when you reap 20 souls. Now on to the different types of cards. There are four main types of cards and a couple subtypes uh, in the game of Hecatomb. First off we'll have uh, minions like this guy here. Minions are the basic creatures that you use to build abominations that you will attack your opponent with to reap souls and to take out their abominations. You have fate cards, which are uh, spells and abilities that you use as an inbringer to enhance your minions and abominations, uh, do damage to your opponent's abominations, and, uh, and perhaps reap souls as well. Let's get that one for the moment. Then we've got uh, gods. This is the god set. Uh, gods are while living creatures are the things that you are kind of trying uh, to appease in the game and they are a permanent on the battlefield they don't attack or block but they do have a one-time ability that happens when you play them and then a continuing ability that uh, gives you something that you can use for the rest of the game we then have relics uh, which are artifacts and and powerful items that you may find within the world of Hecatomb to, to help you on your quest. They also stay on the field permanently, uh, but you know don't do any damage or anything of themselves because they're not creatures, they're just items. There are also minions that are called combat minions. Those are minions that you can actually play during combat. Um, the only things that you can do during combat are uh, the combat itself and play combat minions and combat fates, which are spells. And while you can play combat minions and combat fates uh, during the regular parts of your turn, they're the only things you can play during combat or on another player's turn. Now, let's go over the parts of a card. Minion cards are all set up the same. In the top left hand corner of the card, you'll find its strength. Uh, this is not only its attacking strength, but also its defensive strength. Next to that will be a text box, which has any different abilities that the minion may have and grant the abomination that it's part of, uh, including any keyword abilities. Right under that you'll have the cost and the doom of the card. Uh, that is how many mana it takes to put it into play and at least one mana of the doom uh, that it uh, comes from. There are four different dooms in the game. You have gray which is corruption, blue which is deceit, Red, which is destruction, and green, which is greed. So if anything has a cost of, say, six greed, uh, it has to have six mana total to cast it, one of which must be green or greed related. Underneath uh, that, you'll have the card type, minion or combat minion, and its subtype, anything from uh, outsider to Aztecal to uh, aliens even in the third set. Right under that will be the name of the card, uh, in the corners around the art, you'll see the trigger boxes. These relate to the bottom of the card, where you'll find a, any conditional ability that it may have, or uh, a triggered ability. Whatever's in that, that text box is what it does, uh, and the clear window at the bottom of that text box has to, the, the trigger underneath the card has to match the color of the text box in order for that trigger to go off. Fate, Relic, and God cards are all pretty much set up the same way. At the top, where a minion would have its text box with its abilities, uh, the Fates, Relics, and Gods have their name uh, and underneath their type and subtype. Um, either Fate, God, or Relic for a type, and subtypes uh, are generally only for the Fates. You've got um, mishaps, uh, invocations, some other things like that. Right under that you also have the cost and doom. 
again works just like the uh, the minions do the the total number you need and at least one of whatever color uh, or alignment of doom is there with it uh, at the bottom where the uh, minions have the conditional ability text box with their trigger window uh, is just the regular text box for fates relics and gods that will tell you um, what it is what it does and uh, for gods it'll have a one-time ability in brackets uh, and a an ongoing ability underneath that is not in brackets onto mana and abominations like its cousin game magic the gathering hecatomb uses mana to cast creatures and spells or in this case minions and fates but you may have noticed that we never showed you what a mana card looks like that's because every card in hecatomb can be mana by simply playing it to the field upside down. Like magic, you get one mana per turn. And mana can be stacked up in your mana zone, like so, and used to cast things from your hand. In order to cast this minion here, the Breath Stealer, we will need four mana. And at least one of them must be gray, which is the Corruption Doom, if I'm not mistaken. Let me double check that, though. I'm correct. Corruption. So in order to play this, we will need at least one gray mana. Here's three and one green. At least one Corruption mana and then three mana of any other Doom. And we can play that to the field. And that'll be true of all the cards that we play. When playing your minions, you play your minions to the table one at a time, but stack them on top of each other to create abominations. Abominations are what you use in the game to attack and to defend and to reap souls and gain victory over your opponents. This particular, <coughs> excuse me, this particular abomination is now a strength of three plus two plus two as you can see you can always see all of those it is a strength of seven and its size is three because it is three minions stacked on top of each other when you are attacking if you attack a, another player they can either choose to defend with one of their abominations or if they don't defend or can't defend then you hit them directly um, if you are hitting a another creature, you will use the your your abomination's strength, in this case seven. If you are hitting another player and you want to reap souls from them, then you will use your abomination's size. This abomination is at a size three. So it will do seven damage, but it will reap three souls. When your abomination takes damage, it will take it from the top down. Uh, if this particular Abomination were to take three damage, it would do two damage and take out the minion on the top. It would be severed from the abomination and discarded. That third damage would roll over to this next one, but it's not enough to take it out because it has two strength and therefore it goes away. There's no marked damage. It doesn't stay, uh, you know, one damage for the rest of the turn. You can't play a fate afterward to do one more damage to take off this, this minion. If it doesn't do enough damage to kill it, then the damage doesn't happen at all. However, if this same minion were stacked in a different way, say like this, and were to take three damage, that three damage would take out the top minion, and that's it. There wouldn't be any rollover uh, if you had it stacked as we had it previously, uh, and, and it were to take two damage, that would kill the top minion. But if you took two damage and that three was on top, then it wouldn't kill the top minion. So sometimes it's better to try and keep larger minions toward the top of your abomination. Now, game setup. At the beginning of the game, each player will shuffle their deck uh, and draw four cards. They will also get five souls. Now, souls are how you win the game, and yes, you start a fourth of the way there because you only need to get to 20 to win. Then we go into the regular turns of the game. At the beginning of your turn is your ready phase. In this order, you will gain one soul because yes, you start with five, you gain one, every turn 
So the, turn, the game itself can only last about 15 turns before somebody hits 20. Then you untap all of your cards, readying, for the turn, readying them for the turn. Uh, then you draw two cards, not just one, but two. Then you move on to your main phase. You can do any of these actions in any order you would like. You can add one mana card to your mana zone. You can play cards from your hand, or you can attack. Now you can play cards and attack multiple times, and you can do them in any order you would like. So you can attack with one of your abominations, then play a couple cards, and then attack with a different abomination. Abominations that are only one minion cannot attack or block, so you want to make sure you get those guys built up. If a minion was played onto an abomination that turn, then it cannot attack. So you probably want to attack and with an abomination and then add a minion to it. Once you've uh, played all the cards you want to play and done all the attacks that you want to do, then play passes to your opponent. During your opponent's turn, all you can do is play combat minions and combat fates. There are lots of keywords in Hecatomb that illustrate different minion abilities. And I won't go all over all of these now because seriously, there's a lot of them. But I'll provide you a link to a nice little handy um, worksheet that someone made on BoardGameGeek that will uh, tell you all of those and what they all do. Uh, now, as far as deck construction, your deck has to be at least 60 cards. Um, there are only You can only have three copies of any given card so three for a play set. Uh, and you may notice that starter decks only come with 40. They did uh, change that minimum deck number from 40 to 60 later on in the game's life. Um, but as it stands now, and forever I guess since the game is dead, 60 cards is the minimum for a constructed deck. Three copies of any given card. Um, you can play with any number of dooms you want. It's probably best, of course, to only play with uh, probably two, one or two. Uh, playing with all four, you can get big, powerful cards, but you may be able to not be able to get the triggers that you want on some of your minions or um, have the mana that you need to play everything uh, if you're playing all four dooms. But anyway, there it is. That's uh, an overview of how to play Hecatomb. Uh, come back and see us again. We'll do some Let's Play videos of this. I've got a couple of uh, different opponents lined up for me to play. Uh, and... We're going to do some breakdowns of the boxes, booster boxes that we opened, and show you how the rarities broke down and all that good stuff. All right, until next time, thank you. This is Jason from the Dead Card Gamer. Have fun and keep playing.